Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal this Sunday. I hope the weekend is going well, or kind of well, because I'm sure you're a little bit disappointed after what happened yesterday. But aside from the football, I hope your weekend is going well, wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world. Of course, as just mentioned, today's show is all going to be about reflecting on yesterday's events at the Emirates. Two drop points for Arsenal. First time this season they've failed to win in the Premier League, being held 1-1 by Brighton at home in a game mired in controversy, of course, because of the Declan Rice red card uh, early in the second half when Arsenal were leading 1-0 thanks to that Kai Havertz goal. Declan Rice has since apologised for his part in the game yesterday. So we're going to look at what Declan's had to say, going to look at what Mikel Arteta's had to say. I'm going to have my say. You've all had your say. So we're going to have, yeah, plenty to discuss today. We'll also go over the game as well, go through my player ratings, Look at what else Mikel Arteta has been saying about the game as well. So plenty to discuss after what was a pretty eventful match at the Emirates. For the first 47 minutes, though, it was all going pretty much to plan for Arsenal leading 1-0 thanks to that Kai Havertz goal just before halftime. They weren't at their best. They started well, lost their way a little bit. I honestly do think the injury to Martin Odegaard um, played a big, big part in Arsenal losing their way a little bit. It just really did seem to impact them because they were so good the, up to that point, basically, and then they just couldn't quite get control back the way they had in the game prior uh, to the injury, but they did find a way to get in front. And at halftime, everything looked set for three wins out of three, leading 1-0, had kept Brighton very much at arm's length. Um, but then obviously the red card happened in the second half and the game completely changed. And when you look at the stats here and you look at the field tilt in terms of how the game was played up to and after the red card, you can see the difference that it was. These stats and graphics taken from canonstats.com. Scott puts them together excellently. As always, you look at the expected goals, 1.8 to Arsenal, 1.7 to Brighton. So very, very close. Brighton doubled the amount of shots that Arsenal, 22 to 11, only four on target for Brighton, those seven on target for Arsenal, uh, Brighton dominating possession and territory and passes, as you can imagine. And when you look at the field tilt, you can see how the game panned out prior to the red card, Arsenal on top. Soon as the red card happened in the second half, Brighton obviously dominating uh, the ball and possession and territory, although probably the two biggest chances in the game to actually win that game fell to Arsenal on the uh, rare occasion they did launch a bit of a counter attack. Now, obviously, the Declan Rice red card was the biggest point, point in the game. Everything changed after that dismissal. Um, I mean, look, this is what Declan has had to say after the game. OK, I've got it here. He says, I was shocked. I think you could see in my face that I was shocked. He's obviously gone over. I've not sprinted back in front of him and smashed the ball away. I've touched the ball with the outside of my foot. But look, this is the laws of the game. If you touch the ball even a little bit, obviously it's a red card after my challenge in the first half, which I fully accept, a 50-50 that I didn't win. But the second half one, especially with it being in the corner flag, they can't really progress from anywhere there. It was tough. It was harsh. It's one of them things. I have to move on from it. I'll be better for it. And I can only really praise the players, to be honest with you, for digging deep for me and the manager for pushing everyone and the fans as well, who were unbelievable again this afternoon. He then continued. He said, look, I think from my behalf, it's the first sending off in my career. So I just wanted to apologize to obviously my teammates, which I've done. And obviously the fans, you know, when you get sent off, it's never nice. You have a sense of guilt over you. And I was lucky today that my teammates really helped me uh, out, obviously, and we didn't lose the game. So I'll learn from it. I really appreciate all the fan support as always. It's not in my nature ever to get red cards. So I'll learn from it and I'll see where I can be better and I'll be back. That's for sure. Declan Rice, of course, now going to miss the North London derby after the international break because of that one match suspension. So that is what Declan Rice had to say about the red card. Now, this is what his manager had to say. Uh, he said, I was amazed, amazed, amazed because of how inconsistent decisions can be. In the first half, there were two incidents and nothing happened. Then in a non-critical area, the ball hits Declan. He turns around, doesn't see the player coming and touches the ball. By law, he can make that call. But by law, then he needs to make the next call, which is a red card. So he played 10 against 11. This amazed me at this level. And when he'd spoken to Rice, he said, yes, obviously he had a reaction. Anyway, I will repeat myself. By law, you want to do it. You didn't do it in the first half. And then you have to play 11 against 10. Very simple. So that's what Mikel had to say about it. Right. My thoughts on this incident now. And I've had quite a bit of time to think about it, obviously. Um, could Declan Rice have done something different? Of course he could. He didn't need 
to touch the ball. I think that it's obviously deliberate. I think some people have said, oh, he doesn't even know it's there, which is, you know, it's rubbish. He knows what he's doing, Declan. It's just a tiny little nudge on the ball. Um, and so, again, as Mikel says, by the letter of the law, it can be a yellow card. But you've th- this is where common sense needs to come into it. Do, do you have to send someone else off for that? Is anyone, if the referee just tells everyone to get up from the incident and to, ca- and to stop being stupid, does anyone mention this incident ever again in the context of the game? Absolutely not. No one mentions it. Media doesn't mention it. The Brighton manager won't mention it afterwards. Nothing happens. There has got to be some common sense in the game. To send a player off, to completely change a context of a game, to give someone a second yellow card for literally nudging the ball away. A ball, by the way, which was moving. So the free kick shouldn't even have been allowed to be taken at that moment anyway because the ball wasn't even technically in play because the ball's moving. So there's so many things that come together for that incident which should have just been it should have just been left alone. Yes, by the letter of the law, it can be a yellow card. But when you compare it to what obviously Jao Pedro did in the first half, the inconsistency level there is just so mad. If you're not going to book Jao Pedro for booting the ball 30, 40 yards away, and I know like the Brighton manager obviously talked a load of rubbish afterwards, said you can't compare the two situations. Of course you can. But Kai Saka was right there. He was looking to take a quick throw. You could see him immediately looking for like another ball to take a quick throw from, but he and he couldn't find one. And the original ball that he had been chasing after had been booted 40 yards down the pitch. So that is delaying the restart of a game. Absolutely. He has to get booked for that. If you're going to book Declan Rice and not just book him, if you're going to give him a second booking, so completely change the game because of this decision, then you ha- how can you not book the incident in the first half? It's it's so mad. And the referee, I think Chris Kavanagh, I can't stand Chris Kavanagh anyway. I think he's an awful referee. But the look on his face almost makes it worse at the end when he's standing there shrugging his shoulders like, I've got no choice. It's basically that. And you can see he's saying that basically to, uh, to Arsenal players, to our to, um Declan, he's like, well, you, you kicked it away. You gave it a little nudge. I've got no choice. Of course you have a choice. Go back to last week, the Aston Villa game, when John McGinn leathers the ball into William Saliba. Ben White then leathers the ball into uh, John McGinn. I mean, Michael Oliver could have easily booked both players there for what they did, but he didn't. He just tells everyone to get up and get on with it. And everyone laughs it off. And it's just a nothing incident after that. Everyone just laughs about it. And so... That's how that's where common sense prevails. You just tell everyone to get on with it, to to send a player off, to decide to brandish a second yellow card for something as lit, stupid as that, for nudging the ball and a foot away from where it actually was, a moving ball in the first place, and then to not even mention to the Brighton player, not call the Brighton player up on basically deliberately booting Declan Rice, which is what he did. You know, that's not him trying to take a free kick. He's just basically got a free hit on Declan Rice there and decided to absolutely twat him, basically. And no, you know, he gets no punishment whatsoever. It's just the whole incident is mad in my point of view. And I've seen so many people. And again, this is where tribalism comes into it. You see, I've seen it on my replies from what I've said on social media, you know, rival fans saying it's the correct decision. If the roles were reversed and that happened to a player of any other team, every other fan would be like, of that team would be like, are you kidding me? I've never, and I've never seen anything like this before. It falls into the same bracket. And I mentioned it in yesterday's video of the Gabriel Martinelli two bookings at Wolves, the Tommy Asu time wasting one at Palace last week, last season, at the start of last season. It's just one of those at the very start of season type things where referees have got new rules in their head that they're trying to clamp down on. And it's fallen. And it's this, it, ultimately, it's an Arsenal player who's been punished. And we won't see it again. It won't happen again. I've never seen something like that. I've never seen someone sent off and nudging a ball a foot. And I won't ever again. And that's, that's why there's just a feeling, certainly for me anyway, the more I think about it, the more frustrated I get about it. Because it was a totally avoidable situation. Yes, Declan Rice gave the referee the opportunity to make that decision. But that doesn't mean the referee ha- needs to make that decision. Common sense has to come into it. We Everyone pays so much money to go and watch football to completely change the context of a game for something like that. It was a totally avoidable decision, if you ask me. Even if Declan Rice has now apologised for it. And accepted some responsibility which he should because again you know he gave the referee the decision to make so he does have to take some responsibility but I will never watch that incident and think that the referee has made the right call there I won't and if that was any other team I would think exactly the same thing it's not about Arsenal it's not about bias it's just common sense when it comes to refereeing football matches at any level that is never a never an incident worth completely changing the context of a game so there you go 
there are my thoughts on it. Um, and yeah, I'll get to what you guys have been saying as well, because I've got lots of reaction, as you can imagine, from you guys on it as well. Just going back to Mikel Arteta on his thoughts on the actual game, apart from the incident. Uh, he said it was a very t- emotional afternoon, for sure. We started the game really well, created three or four chances that we didn't convert. After that, we had a period with some issues, particularly with the ball, and we lacked some dominance in that period. We then score a really good goal in a moment that we take advantage of the opponent. Then we go in at half time, come back out really strong. The referee makes a decision that changes the course of the game. With 10 men, the team reacted unbelievably well. The stadium reacts unbelievably well, and we should have won the game. And Arsenal did have opportunities to win that game. They had the two big opportunities. Like I said, Brighton, obviously, with a very dominant force, I thought in terms of possession and territory, as you would imagine, they were taking full advantage of the 10 men. And we know what a good football team Brighton are. We know how good they are at keeping the ball against any opponent, 11 versus 11, let alone 10 against 11. But the two big moments, I mean, Bright, um, David Wright did that, make that good save when the ball broke to, I can't remember who it was now, Rye was on the floor and he got up and saved the ball with his legs. So there was that chance for Brighton. But other than that, the Havertz won when he went through. Brilliant. For, Havertz in the second half was sensational. Absolutely top draw. Brilliant performance from Kai Havertz uh, after Arsenal went down to 10 men, but should have scored. No doubt about it. It was all his own work. He did all the hard work, won that ball. Brilliant striker play, forced his way through. Keeper makes a good save. Maybe Havertz could have drilled it a little bit more sort of rather than the side-footed finish. It was still a good save from the keeper. I also think both maybe he and certainly Saka on the follow-up could have gone down. Um, to and referee would have a big decision to make in terms of a penalty. Uh, and then obviously the next bit of play when... Uh, Again, fantastic from Havertz down the right. Wonderful ball in with his right foot to Saka. And he's just stretching, just stretching. He can't quite get enough on it. And the keeper makes his save. The Emirates would have absolutely exploded had one of those gone in. There was so much intensity in that stadium in the second half. So much of a feeling of we were wronged. And yeah, if Arsenal had gone on and won that game, the Emirates would have absolutely exploded. So I thought Arsenal did do well. Um, after about, I think the first 10 minutes after the red card, they struggled, obviously conceded the goal. Poor goal to concede. Saliba and Gabriel way too far apart. Uh, just a simple ball from Lewis Dunk through the middle of midfield. Uh, obviously, there's no Declan Rice there at that point. And just straight through midfield. Big gap between the two centre-backs, which is very strange. You don't often get that. Gabriel then kind of missed the tackle when he could have made it, I thought, on Minte. And obviously, the follow-up falls to Jao Pedro. Thomas Partey had sort of stopped tracking Jao Pedro. The ball falls, falls to him and he makes it 1-1. Arteta didn't make any changes after the red card. And I felt... Maybe he waited a little bit too late to change things. By the time they scored the equaliser, Calafuri was waiting to come on. But I thought maybe that change could have been a little bit more instant than kind of leaving as it was for five minutes to see the how the game panned out. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a it was a tough afternoon, a difficult afternoon for Arsenal, and ultimately it is two drop points. And we all know in the context of the season, in the context of the title, in the context of going up against Manchester City. Two drop points basically is the same as three drop points. And City obviously went on and got a, another good win after that at West Ham last night. Erling Haaland scoring another hat trick, a second hat trick in a row uh, for him. Seven goals in the first three games this season for Erling Haaland. That summer break certainly seems to have done him well, unfortunately. Um, just moving on before we get to, I'll go through my play ratings and look at what you guys have had to say. Raheem Sterling, obviously in the stands. I haven't spoken about Sterling yet, of course, because I wasn't around on deadline day. So I didn't give my immediate reaction to the Sterling deal. I'm going to do that tomorrow. I think I'm going to give my thoughts on Arsenal squad, on the transfer window and everything in a video tomorrow. So I'll talk more about that in that show. But obviously Sterling was in the stands yesterday watching the game after that deadline day move from Chelsea. And uh, Mikel was asked about him in the presser afterwards about how quickly he's going to be able to get up to speed. He says, yes, we'll have to try and speak to him uh, and see what he's been doing and how he's feeling about it. We have to try and find quick wins to get him up to speed as quickly as possible and him understanding what we are looking from him and the dynamics of the team. We will use this time to do that as soon as possible, get him involved. I'm fully expecting he'll be in the squad for the Spurs game after the North London derby. Yes, he's missed a couple of games for Chelsea. But he was ready to play on that opening weekend of the season against Man City when they decided to leave him out of the squad. And that was only a couple of weeks ago. So I can't imagine he's that off it. And if he has two weeks now of training with the team, obviously he's not going to get called up. He's not been called up by England. So he's going to be at London Coley for the next couple of weeks. I'm sure he'll be involved in the game against Spurs. And uh, yeah, Arsenal's certainly going to need him and everyone considering there's not going to be Declan Rice in that game, which is a, a big, big blow not having Rice for the North London derby. Okay, my player ratings, I did do them after the game yesterday, so I'll rattle through them here. David Raya, I thought, was brilliant. David Raya, again, has had such a good start to the season, claimed everything, 
saves when he needed to make saves. Unlucky with the goal, which uh, fell to Jao Pedro, but I gave him an eight. Ben White, again, struggled against Matoma. Ben, Matoma is basically Ben White's kryptonite. He can play fantastically well throughout the season, but as soon as he comes up against Matoma, he gets caused problems. Uh, it's strange how some players do that to other players, that they've just got to... They just know they're going to get joy out of them. And I thought, yeah, White struggled to deal with Matoma again yesterday. Salibra, I gave a seven. Gabriel and Timber, I gave a six. Party, I gave a five. Odegaard, I gave a six. Odegaard, you could see how much he was trying after that injury, but he couldn't. He just didn't have the power on his legs. You could see he was grimacing all the time. You know, that was a bad tackle. It was a big, big th follow through, high follow through. No, you know, not even a word from Chris Kavanagh about it either. Um, and that, that really impacted Arsenal, that injury. I said it yesterday, you could see they were playing so well up to that point. But as soon as that happened, you know, Odegaard, we know, dictates everything in terms of how Arsenal play. And he sets the pace, he sets the press and everything like that. And he couldn't press. You could see he was trying to go and sort of pull the trigger to go and press. But he just didn't have that explosiveness in his legs because there was clearly a big, big issue with there after that injury. I think it had a big impact on the game, that incident. They gave him a six. Rice, I gave a four. Didn't think Rice was playing that well up to the point he got red carded. In the, uh, in the first place, he's having a difficult start to the season. I think Declan Rice is clearly struggling to get back to his best following in the summer and all the football he played last season and throughout the summer. Saka, I gave a seven. Um, Havertz, again, I thought was exceptional, especially after the team went down to 10 men, gave him an eight. Trossard, classic Trossard playing from the start type performance. That did one brilliant ball in for Odegaard, which Odegaard has a volley save from. But apart from that, he just didn't really get in, into the game at all. The Andrew Trossard, so I gave him a five. So those were my player ratings from yesterday's game. And before we get on to what you guys had to say, Mikel's been speaking about Timber, who went off late on. He was kind of holding his knee, and whenever you see Timber holding his knee, you're like, oh my god, uh, what what's that? Hopefully that's not too bad. Mikel said after the game that he thinks it's just cramp, so nothing to be worried about. I think Timber's been called up by the Dutch actually for the international break. Him and his twin Quinton have both been called up. So uh, whether that this sort of changes things and he ends up staying we'll have to wait and see but Mikel certainly doing his best to calm any talk of you know potential injury fears when it comes to Timber after the game okay let's see what you guys have been saying about yesterday's events before we wrap this one up Mr Thirst Joe says here's what happened Veltman threw the ball at Rice's feet and then was kicking at a moving ball and instead he kicked Declan Rice for Rice if someone throws the ball at your feet it's natural to do what Rice did nudge the ball it was just a poor decision I'm sorry I don't see what he did as stupid. I mean, look, Veltman knows exactly what he's doing. If, I mean, again, we talk about tribalism. If Ben White does what Veltman does, we all sit here and probably lord Ben White for getting a Brighton player sent off. Um, and so I'm not going to sit here and hammer Veltman for what he did. He was doing what he did for his team. and uh, that, But it still doesn't give the referee the right. Well, I, don't, I say it doesn't give him the right. It does because by the letter of the law, it's probably the right decision as so many people have been keen to point out. But... I still don't think the referee needed to do what he did. Uh, Ashley Wilson says it was a ludicrous call to send him off. Literally no reason to. Half the stadium assumed the Brighton player had been sent off for the follow through. Ridiculous. Yeah, initially I thought it was a red card for the Brighton player. And it took me a while to sort of realise and the whole stadium to realise exactly what had happened. Uh, Nazi says Rice knew what he was doing. He committed the foul. Why flick the ball away? I don't think it was a foul. To be honest. I know he gave, gave away the free kick, but I don't think it was a foul. I think the Brighton player, Veltman, just completely dived and won the free kick in that area by the quarter flag. Um, he says, why flick the ball away? Run back into position. End of. He has cost us two points today. It's the bottom line. That's on him. He's been poor all season. As today summed him up, he was anonymous. We already have injuries, and now we all miss the North London derby. Ollie Gunner says the referee in the first half literally ignored the fact that Brighton player booted the ball away and didn't book him for kicking it. Last season, Howard Webb did one of his shows with Michael Owen and said, look, uh, Michael, uh, Michael Oliver doesn't want to overreact and let the game get out of control. This is what annoys fans, consistency. And it is exactly consistency. It's the big, big thing. You cannot not book Jao Pedro in the first half if you're going to book Declan Rice in the second half. To have those two incidents in the same game and book one for nudging the ball a foot and not book the other for booting it 40 yards down the pitch. It's just absolutely ridiculous. It's a crazy, crazy thing to do by Chris Kavanagh. McCormick AFC says Havertz was excellent at game, played like a leader. We went down to 10 men. I thought it seems crazy to say, but next two games may be massive for our season and momentum it can give us in the competition. The next two games are huge. You know, Arsenal already now two points behind Man City. The next two games are Tottenham away and Manchester City away. You know, two really difficult games. Arsenal are going to, and they've got the Champions League match on the Thursday night away at Atalanta before. I mean, that's mad how that has been scheduled 
on the before the game against Manchester City. So in the space of a week, Arsenal go to Spurs away, then go to Italy for the Thursday night game, and then come back and play Man City on the Sunday afternoon. It's just made crazy, crazy schedule. It's a huge week for Arsenal, and they're going to be doing it without some key key players, which is going to make it even harder. Carlo Guna says frustrated and annoyed with that decision. No common sense from referee. The game is just gone. It always seems to be us getting these strange decisions, as you highlighted, Charles. The Martinelli double yellow at Wolves. Tommy Asu red. Bruno Elbin Jorginho in the face. Nothing. They are forgetting to draw the lines for Tony's goals. The refereeing standards are poor and it's ruining the game. Also, Charles, I disagree about party. I thought he had a good game, better than he was at Villa last week. Uh, Yad Guna says, hi, Charles. Overall, we played a good game and overall just filled with individual errors. Trossard showed why he's best coming off the bench. And for the third game in a row, Thomas Party's poor decisions or indecisiveness keep putting under pressure. It's what led to Dex's first yellow and even the goal. Yeah, it was poor from Thomas Party in the build-up to Declan's yellow card, first yellow card. But look, Rice still lunged in and made that tackle very, very late. So I'm not sure you can really criticise Party for that decision that Declan Rice took in that moment in the game. Uh, and Quenty says, the idea that Rice gave the referee an opportunity to award a yellow is ridiculous. That was the most innocuous nudge of the ball after a foul I've ever seen. I bet in every other game this season, players will keep nudging the ball away from the free kick taker and won't get as much of a warning from the ref. As usual, the ref chose to apply the rules in the strictest form against us. And I'm sick of it. See, that's a good point as well. When everyone says, look, it's the letter of the law. I agree. But then even yesterday, I think, what was the game? It was a Villa versus Leicester game. I think there was two or three incidents in that game where by the letter of the law, the referee should have yellow carded for the exact same sort of thing, delaying the restart. And he chose not to. And no one mentions that at all. And that's why no one would have mentioned that incident if, if he had just not used, if he had just used common sense and not booked Declan Rice. Um, Mops says, gobsmack, no justification within the context of the match, just a referee ruin a game with an arbitrary decision. Not only has it cost us two points, Rice now misses a North London derby. Let's just hope this lights a fire under Rice and the whole team. Max Gravitas says, Arteta should have made an immediate call, immediate subs and brought Calafuro on without delay, but he waited five minutes and they scored. Yeah, I did think that was a little bit odd from Arteta. And Casey runs, says, absolutely no denying the red card was harsh. However, Rice was stupid and gave him a decision to make. That doesn't stop the inconsistency of the Jao Pedro one, but two wrongs don't make a right. The more important part, Arsenal fans have got to stop this victim mentality. It's embarrassing how many of our so-called fans cry about every single decision that goes against us week after week. The referee standards are poor, but that doesn't mean corrupt or any other tinfoil hat wearing conspiracies. Please stop it. Uh, yeah, I thought that was quite a funny one from Casey Runs. And again, I don't buy into the whole conspiracy thing. And I know lots of people do, and a lot of people buy it to talk about corruption and shout that word out from the rooftops. It's nothing that I believe. I just think it's just incompetence. That's what I think it is at the end of the day. And I thought the referee just got it wrong yesterday when he really had could have uh, could have gone down another route. But there's a reaction show. It's been a bit of an angry one, I suppose, today. Not surprising given what happened in yesterday's game. But look, done is done. Got to move on. Spurs next. International break now to come. A two-week break to for everyone to sort of get their breath back and wait for what's going to be a really, really busy period of the season for Arsenal. Have a great day, everyone. I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to talk about the transfer window, talk about Raheem Sterling. So until then, have a good day. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.